guys, Amanda here from Faithfully Homemade. And today I'm going to show you um, two different science centers that I have. Um, the first one I'm going to go through is some plant, learning about plants, the plant life cycle and um, plant needs, things like that and the parts of a plant. Um, I have a couple different activities for that one. And then the other one I'm gonna show you after this is um, all about animals, sorting animals um, and things like that. So let's get right into it. Um, I will leave links below where you can get all of these activities off my website, um, so no problems there. And if you own uh, my kindergarten first grade bundle, I um, will be adding these, oh wait, no. I, yeah, I think I'll be adding these to that bundle. I have to, I have to look and see what, what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, I have so many different activities I've been working on and adding them to different bundles and things like that. But anyway, I will leave links below to where you can get all of these. Um, okay, so let's just get started. So this one is all about plants and flowers. The first activity is really simple. It's this flower and they're going to match up the parts. So, to make a flower. So these are the parts of a flower. We have flower, we have leaves, we have stem and we have roots. Okay, so really simple, matching them up and, and um, talking about the words and what each part of the flower is called. In that same uh, vein, parts of a flower, I also have this. This is a tiny little pocket chart here and it's gonna have these cards and then the word cards and they just have to match them up. So roots would go here with that picture. Okay, and then we're gonna match up stem and then we're gonna match up flower, and then we're gonna match up leaves, okay? You don't have to do it in a pocket chart, but I like to do it like that. Okay, the next one is matching up the flower life cycle. So here are the cards, and um, you're gonna mix them up, and then basically they're just going to put them in order according to the numbers on this mat. So here we have a seed, that's the first thing, right? And then looking at their cards, they're gonna decide Hmm, what's going to come next? So they're going to have a sprout. And then they're going to have a bud. I'm sorry, a seedling. A bud. A blossom. And a flower. Okay? So you're going to have them all in order there, just like so. Okay, then... This does the exact same thing. This one is also flower life cycle. Um, you just need a dye for this. Um, this is a really big chunky one that I got from the dollar store, but any regular dye will work because there's only six um, steps in the life cycle, and so this works perfectly, a dye. So they're going to roll it, and I got a number three. So the third part of the life cycle is a seedling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. I gave you um, these different pictures to cover it up. There's um, rain, a bee, or a sun, because obviously plants need those things. And then you can, the kids can pick whatever they want to cover it up, and they'll cover up the seedling, because that's the third part of the life cycle. And they're going to roll again. The sixth part of the life cycle is the flower, so they're going to cover up the flower. They can pick any one of their little cover-up pictures here to cover it up. And they'll just keep going, and if they roll the same one again, uh, well, the number one would be seed so we'll cover up the seed um, but if they roll the same one again like if they roll a six again that would be flower so they can either cover it up again with another picture or they can just skip it and roll again until they've covered up all of the um, steps in the flower life cycle so that is that one and then the last one for plants is talking about plant needs first you would obviously talk to your child about what does what are the three things a plant needs and then um, they're going to put them on the mat. So they're gonna just like, you know, place them on the mat and then they're gonna match up the word. So it's kind of a Montessori matchup where they match the word to the picture. So this is sun, water, and soil. Those are the things that a plant needs. There you go. So, all right, now let me show you the activities I have for animals. Okay guys, so let me show you what I have here. Um, this um, activity center is going to be working on animal habitats and then sorting animals in all sorts of different categories. The first thing is you're going to get all these animal cards for all the different habitats. And what I did is just to make it easier is, um, oh, I didn't do it on that one. 
Um, on the back of all the cards, I don't know why I didn't, this should have a W on it for wetland, but on the back of all the cards, I wrote a letter just so that I would remember which habitat it is, so R for rainforest, W for wetland. Um, that way the kid, and it's kind of self-checking too, because then the kids can check it, and I don't know why I have a few of them that don't have it. My goodness. Okay, that would be rainforest. Here I have an O for ocean. But anyways, so that was just like a little tip I was going to give you is to write the, um, you know, write a little letter so that you can kind of remember which habitat it goes in. But anyway, you're going to get all of these animal cards. And then um, what you're going to do is for one of the activities, you're going to get these maps. And these are the different habitats. So you have desert, ocean, arctic, rainforest, and wetland. And I would just take two of my mats so um, just so that the kids don't get too overwhelmed I would maybe do rainforest and ocean at the same time and then what they're gonna do is you're gonna they're gonna look at their cards and I would only give them the cards that ha are rainforest and ocean animals and then they're just gonna sort them so ocean animals and then um, rainforest animals here so they're gonna just sort them on the right mat and you could talk about um, the habitats and why they live there and that kind of thing um, so they're just going to keep on going and sort them I wouldn't I mean for older students sure you could put out all five habitats and then just have them sort all the cards um, but I would maybe do two habitats at a time and then talk about the different animals that live in those two habitats so it's basically just sorting them by the habitat there and then I have a lot of other ways you can sort them. Um, another thing I thought I would do with my little kids is just with the cards themselves, um, I might try to take my um, kiddos have this whole little bag here of just different animals here. And so um, I might have them even use these and kind of sort them um, with the cards. So, for example, um, I might have my child take, like, their whale toy, toy and match it up with the whale um, picture. So if you have some toys that kind of match up, you could lay out, like, maybe three of them and then have the, you know, real, real little ones match up the toy to the picture. Um, so I thought that might be fun. So I thought I'd mention it. But anyways, here's another way you can sort them. So I give you these cards that have all of the different... Um, types of animals. So here we have mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and amphibians. And I also give descriptions of, um, you know, what what that animal might have. So they're vertebrae, they have lungs, they're covered with dry scales, most hatched from eggs, and they're cold-blooded for a reptile. Just to help the kids sort them a little bit um, better. Those would be good for older kids to for sorting. And then um, basically all they're going to do then is they're going to take their cards and they're going to sort them under the correct heading. So a bullfrog would be an amphibian, a duck would be a bird, and so on. So they're going to go through here and they're just going to go ahead and match up the cards to the type of animal. All right, let me show you another way they can sort them. Okay, so they can sort them by whether they fly or don't fly. So here we have... A bunny obviously does not fly, and then a vulture would fly, and so on, and they would just continue on sorting that way. Okay, then they can sort them by the amount of legs that they have. So if they have, like, the vulture had two legs, and obviously the dolphin has no legs, and four legs. Let me see if I can find one with four legs the panther would have four legs so they would just go through their cards and sort them no, by how many legs okay now they can sort by water animal or land animal so that shark is a water animal but if we have uh, let's see a monkey that would be a land animal and then there are some that don't even fit in that category an alligator is kind of both, so we'll put him down here because he can, he can do both, can't he? Um, so you would just have the kids, you know, continue on sorting in such a way, you know, that they do it like that. Okay, let me show you the next one. Okay, this one is good um, for differentiating between mammals and not mammals. So obviously if it's a live birth, 
it would be a mammal, and if it lays eggs, it does not. So, like, a snake is not a mammal um, because it lays eggs as well as ducks. Um, but then, you know, let me see here. And then a jaguar, those are live births. So, then they would just continue sorting in such a way. Okay, now we have smooth skin, feathers, hair, or scales. And they would just um, sort in that way. So, a panther has hair. And let me find a bird here that has feathers. Here we have, oh, here we have. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that would have scales. I know um, a snake would have scales. And then like smooth skin would be more like your amphibians. Um, like where's a frog? Here we go. Well, depending on bullfrogs don't have smooth skin, but some of your amphibians like your, here we go, a tree frog would have more of like a smooth skin. And then feathers obviously would be a bird. I'm looking for a bird here. Here we go. Okay, and then they would just continue sorting in that way. And then let me show the last one. Okay, this one is just like the fly or don't fly. They would sort them by um, whether they swim or they don't swim. Okay, so that is how it works, guys. Um, I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Bye.